What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and today we're going to satiate my inner compulsive desire to collect things by making a guide video about it. Today we'll be looking at collecting mounts in Shadowlands, but more specifically these are mounts that are a 100% guaranteed drop. So thank you so much for joining me today and let's get started on our mount collecting spree. As always, this video will be segmented out and timestamped so you can look through and see which ones you might not already have, as well as to refresh your memory if you end up collecting these at a later time. If you have any comments or questions, then feel free to ask here, or you can swing by my community discord to chat and other stuff. The link for that will be in the description to this video. Our first couple mounts are extremely easy to get, so we'll start with the Shimmer Mist Runner. This is a simple puzzle that takes place in the open world version of the Mists of Tirnasythe dungeon. If you remember how the dungeon is laid out, then you'll need to go to the entrance of the maze to start this. I'll leave coordinates on screen to the exact spot we'll be starting in, which is the Mist Veil Tangle. Now, we need to reach the Mist Caller boss room just like in the dungeon, however, this time there are thankfully no stupid symbols or icons to mess with. Instead, we'll be looking for these blue lantern looking orb things in each of the doorways. They'll sometimes be hanging from the walls, and sometimes they'll be closer to the ground. First, we'll go left here, since you can see these two blue lanterns hanging from the top of the archway. Then we'll take a right at this singular blue lantern. You'll also sometimes notice red lanterns too that look kind of like the same one, but those are not the right way, so make sure to go left where this blue lantern is sitting on the ground. You'll then take another right turn here, and then after that we'll go straight. This lantern is sometimes hidden behind a bird, so make sure you don't miss it. Lastly, we'll take a slight left, which is where the last blue lantern is, and this will bring us into the Mistcaller boss room. In here, if someone hasn't killed him recently, you should see Shizgare. And after defeating this little spriggan, you can click on the friendly Shimmer Mist Runner NPC, and you'll be awarded the mount for less than like two minutes worth of effort, or about the same amount of time that was spent on designing and testing the mission board system for your covenant. While you're in this area, you can also get your hands on the Spine Maw Glade Chewer. Conveniently, we're right near one of the best spots to get this big creepy crawler, so we're going to take this second path from the left out of the Mistcaller boss room. You should see a ton of Spriggans with names like Bristlecone, Bonebreaker, Deranged Guardian, and Bristlecone, Henchfiend, and stuff like that. Basically, we just need to kill a bunch of these guys. After slapping them around for a while, one of them will eventually yell, The enemy is too strong, save us, Tizo, or something lame like that because they can't handle your awesomeness. When this occurs, a big crawler bug should appear named Chompy. Defeating Chompy causes Gorm Tamer Tizo to show up, and defeating him will award you that Chonky Bug Mount. There is a small bit of luck associated with getting Chompy to spawn, so keep an eye on your chat window in case someone else gets him to spawn while you're doing your own Spriggan Slaughter. Next we have a super easy and very unique looking mount, the Wild Seed Cradle. Earning this mount is extremely simple, but it does require a bit of running around and some travel, so it does take like probably 10-15ish minutes to get. To earn the Wild Seed Cradle, we'll need to acquire 5 items, all of which should be in the Garden of the Night section of Ardenweald. This is basically directly east of Root Home, but I'll be leaving coordinates for all the items you have to collect. First is the Gardener's Basket, which is near this Wild Seed Pool stuck between these two almost identical colored rocks. The items don't glow by the way, so even with the coordinates it might take a second for you to see them. Next we'll run over and grab the Gardener's Hammer. This will be on this broken carriage on the edge of a hill. Then we'll go up these two bridges to reach the Diary of the Night, which is on this table here. We're going to jump over the ledge here and jump onto a branch, taking this and going a little further south into the Garden of the Night, and on the right hand side we're going to see some wild seeds, and next to those is the Gardener's Flute. From the flute we'll head south once again around this big tree to another broken carriage. It would seem like the denizens of Ardenweald really aren't big into vehicular maintenance. Anyways, between these two wheels on the passenger side of the carriage is the final item, the Gardener's Wand. There may or may not be some annoying Spriggans scattered around here and there, so just eliminate them as necessary. Now that we've gathered all five of these items, we'll need to combine them by right-clicking on one. This will turn all five into Twinkle Star's Gardening Toolkit. So now, of course, we need to return these to Twinkle Star. Head back to the Root Home Flight Path and take it over to Tirnaval. Twinkle Star is located near the eastern exit of Tirnaval, so chat with her and choose the dialogue option that you've found the tools. She'll then give you access to the Cache of the Moon, which is that glowy orb right behind her. Click on that, and congratulations on acquiring your new floating conchiglie, and now I want some ricotta and tomato basil marinara to stuff that thing with. Next, we have a mount that's pretty easy to get, though does require killing a bunch of random stuff for a special item, or you'll just stumble across it by blind luck like I did. 
The mount we're after next is the Majestic Arboreal Gulper, which is just a nice way to say it's a really big, cool-looking frog. To get this mount, you'll need to get a special item called Unusually Large Mushroom. This can drop from virtually anything in Ardenweald, though it seems more common from rare mobs and elites in general. This item only has a 20 minute duration, so once you get it, you'll have to head to a specific area in Ardenweald. You'll be heading to the northwest corner of the map, up in the Dreamsong Fen area. At the coordinates on screen, you should see an interactive dirt pile called the Damp Loam. You'll then interact with it, which will consume the mushroom in your inventory, and will then spawn a slowly growing giant mushroom. This will turn into the rare spawn Humongous, an aptly named Massive Mushroom Monster. Defeating this fungal foal will reward you with the Arboreal Gulper. There are a decent amount of mobs in this area, so you might want to clear out a bit of it before engaging this fella. Lastly, we have the Swift Gloom Hoof. This is by far the most involved mount of the five to get, as you have to do a couple side quest chains in Ardenweald for a certain NPC to be able to interact with them. The two quest chains you'll need to have completed are Trouble in the Gormling Corral, which starts at Glimmerfall Basin and is given by the Lady of the Falls, and this will continue into the second quest chain needed, Tricky Spriggans. Once both of these are marked as complete in your Sojourner of Ardenweald Achievement, then you have access to the NPC needed to get this mount, so get this out of the way first if you haven't yet. Now that you've hopefully gotten those quest chains taken care of, we'll be heading to the open world version of Tirna Scythe. This time we'll be heading all the way to what would be the end of the dungeon, where the boss usually spawns. Before you head that way though, I would suggest picking up some goblin glider kits and have 10 lightless silk with you. Once you reach where the world boss normally is, we'll be taking a path up the right hand side and working our way past a bunch of gormlings, or just stealthing past as us sneaky cheaty boys would do. Now there are many ways to get to the item we need to collect, but I'll show you folks one that I know any class in the game can do regardless of what your moves are. You will want those Goblin Glider kits for this if you don't have like Grappling Hook or Heroic Leap or something along those lines, because we're going to jump on this precariously far away branch that will lead to certain death and annoyance if you don't land on it correctly. If you jump from this ledge and use a Goblin Glider, you can swirl back around and land pretty easily here. Once you totally do this on your first try, you'll run up this branch and cross over on the really thick branch on the right. You'll then hug this wall here and be very careful, as there is a hole in the ground you can fall in which will drop you back down to the boss room. You should then be right in front of broken carriage number 3 in this video, and behind it to the right is a cracked soul web, which miraculously turns into a broken soul web when you loot it, for whatever reason. You'll then take this soul web and those 10 lightless silk to Elder Gwenna, who is located in Glitterfall Basin. Make sure you aren't mounted when you do this, or it could break by the way, and you might have to like, log in and log out and reload and whatever. If you speak with her, she will be able to repair the soul web, and it will turn into a repaired soul web. Next, for us Night Fae, we'll head back to our Covenant Sanctum and talk to Ysera, and she'll turn the soul web into a Dreamcatcher. If you aren't a Night Fae though, there should be some elite Queen's Guards right outside of the Night Fae Covenant entrance on the eastern side, and if you talk to them, they'll get Ysera to come out and help you. Now that we have the Dreamcatcher, we'll be heading to Hibernal Hollow. Heading north from the flight path, we'll then be in the Dream Shrine Basin, which is where we'll be using our Dreamcatcher by right-clicking on it. You can technically leave from any of the exits, but I just chose to go to the north one because there's no ads there. Doing this will give us a 5 minute buff, teleporting us into a special dream realm. The enemy we're looking for is Nightmare, whom will be running around in circles around Hibernal Hollow in this shadowy realm. You can really wait for it anywhere, or you can chase it down, but it'll come around to this point eventually. I ended up being able to solo this, but uh, it took a couple tries, I'm not gonna lie. He has like 480,000 health and his auto attacks hit pretty hard for a regular DPS, unless you've got like a tank off spec or you can heal a lot, or you have a pet or something. This might be something you need a group for, or at least a couple other people. Don't forget to refresh your Dreamcatcher buff as needed. Once you defeat this evil Ponycorn, you'll be able to claim your brand new mount. And there you go folks, 5 guaranteed mounts that are all pretty easy to get with very little time invested. I would say my favorite of the bunch is probably the Shimmer Mist Runner, mainly because I like the color contrast it has and it reminds me a lot of the White War Talbuck from Burning Crusade, which was one of my favorite mounts for quite a while. Anyways, I hope you found this little guide video entertaining, informative, or maybe even a combination of both. If so, then please consider leaving a comment, a like, or sharing this video with other folks that you think might find the channel helpful, as it's all greatly appreciated and helps a ton with the channel's growth. And as always, I just wanted to extend my gratitude to you, all of my regular viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Shiba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.